Hey y'all, Reb Dino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail Thu Hiker update and community news update. So, what is going on? Where are the hikers? Well, to begin with, they have they have had uh, frog drowners, trash moving, dumpster moving, rain out there, and a lot of folks have told me this past week they've been dodging lightning. Talk a little bit about that in a minute. They've been in on the trail when the water was up to their calves. So it has been a tough week for through hikers out there. So where are they? Well, the bubble right now is spread all the way from Springer pretty much all the way up to Hot Springs. So the leading edge is somewhere between, uh, I would say, the Irwin uh, and Damascus probably where the leading edge is but we've got a ton of people that are in the smokies ton of people between you know in georgia up at the franklin fontana knock so we just that place is jam-packed i'm sure right now and this heat map here kind of shows you where those folks are typically have been in the past so let's go ahead and talk about those folks out there that we know of where their positions are so we got geo made it to fontana and they they think that the herd has thinned out somewhat although it could be that it's just spread out more so definitely less than what started or registered and of course that's normal by the time you get to fontana you've had attrition you know people getting out because they just don't want to be there no more people that are gotten hurt uh, things have gone on back home they had to get off so on and so forth so uh runway is somewhere in tennessee and is the second hiker that I've talked to that had to run to dodge lightning on ridges. Uphills in the Marion, Virginia area, and also had to dodge lightning in the Mount Rogers section. Uh, he said he saw it hit the ground 150 feet away from where he was at. And wind gusts and lightning do not make for a great hike. Thing. So lightning is very, very dangerous. It kills people every year. So according to the National Weather Service, on their storm data over the past 30 years in the U.S. has averaged 43 reporting lightning fatalities per year, and only about 10% of the people who are struck by lightning are killed. The other 90% are left with various degrees of disability. So just imagine that. There's 43 people killed, but there's roughly 387 annually are left with some type of disability. So do you want to be left with a disability, much less killed? So please, please out there guys, get off the ridges, uh, get in a shelter if you can. It'd be good if you just got off the trail completely when you got that storm coming. Hopefully you're plugged into the weather system out there. There's Appalachian Trail weather and other stuff, watching the radar when you can, but plan ahead, lightning is no joke, not something to mess with. Tunis is around the Franklin area. Greenleaf and Apple Pie, they are back on trail. They are a Sobo folks that started in Ekatadin and they are flip-flopping around and they plan to finish sometime in the spring of 2022. Right now, they have now crossed over into New York. Legends in North Carolina, not so much. He is around the 800 mile mark coming up on that thousand mark really fast. Aquaman is in the Smokies. Shaker Hikes is in the Smokies. Audrey has made it to North Carolina as in hiking and is hiking hiking with Liv, Ryan, and Parker their dog, and she got her trail name of karaoke, or is it karaoke? Leave a comment, tell me which one it is, cause I don't know which one it is. Uh, Lila made it to the trail. The, the Blazing Baker and Ultra Hiker are, are somewhere around the Triple Crown area in Virginia. Greg is in the Franklin area. John Rose, he's around Franklin. Emily got on trail up in Georgia and is very curious. She indicated to me that when they got to the Springer parking lot, there was a lot of people there from Georgia ATC what their registrations numbers were down on the book they signed at Amicola Falls State Park Visitor Center. Now, I don't think they were like people from the ATC and Harper's Ferry or North Carolina, any of those places. I think they were maybe the Georgia trail club i'm not real sure about that but in any case i found it real curious that they're asking for that she said she passed six different people and every one of them asked her what her registration number is they said they were going to report that back to the atc so that is really odd to me considering the atc has done everything they can pretty much not to keep up with you know how many folks are out there on the trail because 
you know, they, they've taken away the incentive for bag tags. They've taken away the incentive for, uh, you know, of recognizing people for through hikers. So a lot of people just aren't registering. So I, I just found that really curious why they were doing that. Um, Papa Groot and Old Goat, they are north of Hot Springs and on their way to Irwin. Mike and Kathy, they are somewhere around the Bland area. Misha, he is on the approach trail heading to Springer. Hulk has made it to Damascus, and he says the crowds are big. There's quite a few folks in town and a bunch more a week or so behind him. So, yeah, there's always a bunch of folks behind Hulk. No doubt about that because he's way out there in front of them. Uh, Captain America has been hiking with Rapture for around 300 miles and just got into Hampton, Tennessee. They are staying with a trail angel there named Sheepdog. And Sheepdog is going to get them back on the trail. Sheepdog uh, finished hiking, uh, will finish hiking this year as a section hiker and has been hiking since 2006. So that'll be neat to see that. $2 steak from the class of 2020. He has gotten back on the AT and he's got 589 miles to finish his through hike. So he's Nobo from Harper's Ferry uh, into Bennington, Vermont. Jordan Heisler has got a new trail name of Luscious, and he is near Franklin. Pinot's around Hot Springs. Skidmark and Outdoor Fresh are around Franklin for their resupply, and they said that around the Muskrat Shelter, there was, of course, the shelter was full, and there was somewhere around 20 to 25 tents set up around Muskrat Shelter. So if you know anything at all about that shelter, you'll know one, there's not really level spots right around the shelter. So you're gonna be spread out on both sides of the trail there. And also it's kind of a flat spot in there. I know when I left after rain, the trail was completely flooded. So I can imagine a lot of folks gonna be needing to dry out after uh, setting up a tent there at Muskrat Shelter. The Drifters, they are north of Damascus. Soa, who is traveling right now with repeating spoons, and they should be north of Irwin by now. Funksters around Franklin. Michael Sanders got a trail name of Possum, and he is into the smokers with Ramble, who previously threw hike Sobo in 2019, 2020. Freight Train, he got off trail for just a short family celebration and is going to be back on trail in a few days and heading into the Smokies. Brandon Washington is on his way to Dix Creek Gap. Deer D. Dice is north of Hot Springs and hiking through a flooded river. This is a video he sent me of the river there at Hot Springs. Captain Munchashi are going for it. They're going to yell at me to see, see if an old geezer can make it once they get past the turn there. This is supposedly the worst spot. Looks like it's cold. I hear some oh my gods. Looks like they're having a great time. Bet Jack's glad he wore long pants. How is it? Okay. So that is amazing to be hiking through that. You really can't see the trail there. You've got to follow those blazes. Uh, Subman and Suds with two peas. They are somewhere around the Damascus area. Tex is around the Smokies. Traveling Beats, he is north of Roan Mountain and heading into Hampton. And he should be there in the next day or so. And he sent some trail updates of what's going on out there on the trail. So he said the Mother Marion's Hostel is open. And Mother Marion's Hostel is right after, I believe it's Sam's Gap there up near Big Ball. He also wanted to mention that the Walmart and Irwin, which is accessible by Uncle Johnny's shelter, shelter shuttle, excuse me, uh, has leftover COVID vaccines that they make available on a first come, first served basis about six o'clock every weekday. So if you're interested in getting that, uh, then uh, the course of vaccines free of charge, check that out and you can uh, get on Uncle Johnny's shuttle there at 4.30 to go to that Walmart. Mandy Stone is in Georgia and had to get off the trail due to some lightning and should be back on uh, heading toward Neal's. RV's on his way to Dix Creek Gap. Kentucky is in the Smokies. Mr. Freeze, he is north of Glasgow. So if I didn't mention your name there, please send me your updates on Friday or Saturday. That works out best. If you send it to me earlier in the week, then I may not be able to include it because the information will be old. Obviously, you'd be further up the trail. Uh, I'm not giving out exact locations anyway, but uh, I'm, I'm being, I've got so many folks that at some point in time, I've got to cut that off. So if you could send that to me uh, no later than Friday or Saturday, that would be great. 
a couple folks have gotten off the trail. Osat is off trail and he got off down in Georgia. And Trisha Thomas is off due to an injury. And Gaddy is off due to, it looks like he aggravated a previous injury, got on trail, thought he was okay. And then now he's got a torn muscle, muscle and ligament and in his ankle. So he's gonna have to have surgery, but he says after the healing, uh, he is going to get out on the trail, become a trail angel, and he is going to give back to the community. So for now, he's going to heal, recover, and then he's going to support others. And he thanks everybody out there in the hiker community for all they did support him on his hike. So appreciate the hiker community being the great community that you are. And so we got some registrations for the ATC. Those continue to go up. Nobo last week, we had 2,681. And this week, we got 2,721. Flip floppers last week, we had 155. And this week, we got 163. And so, four and five. So that is up 58 hikers from 2,000. 80 and we have crossed over the 3,000 threshold and we are now at 3,038. So that is still down a little bit from what it was in previous years. Of course, we're, you know, season's not over. Still people are going to be signing up, but that is going to be getting less and less just because we've got less and less time in front of us for the season. Uh, in 2018, we had Nobo alone, we had 3,862. Uh, people that registered Nobo for the entire year. So the trend actually since 2018, we've kind of been trending down a little bit. I know a lot of and 21, it would be a huge that remains to be seen, but people thought it'd be a huge year for people that got off trail last year due to the COVID to get back on. And then uh, then also that you know people who delayed because of COVID that never started to get back on. So that remains to be seen, but we will see that. April 1st is going to be a huge day. That will be the largest day of folks starting on the trail. And that will be, there's 55 people starting that day. So right now there has been uh, 12, 1,293 folks have signed the book down at Amicola Falls. So that is up from 1,000 last week that we reported. So that's 293 people that have started this week. That is somewhere around uh, 42 people starting per day, something like that. So that's a lot of folks starting uh, on each day. So some trail news. So due to some damaging storms and mainly due to the water associated with those storms, they have closed a portion of the approach trail down at Amicola Falls State Park. Apparently there is damage done to the staircase at the falls down there. And so they had to close part of the falls, uh, which is on the approach trail and part of the Ridge West Ridge Trail. They say they expect to have those repairs done quickly. Uh, Misha, who started today, confirmed that you could do the trail, but not the stairs. And then Lila also started, and she said that the stairs are out because of flooding and some damage. And she said the ATC guy told them that they were having climbers come to repel down the falls to fix it soon. So... Uh, Soon is a relative term. Anytime you're trying to fix stuff while you're repelling is not something that happens really fast. Uh, but you can go around the top of the falls trail to get and then the rest of the approach up to Springer is open from there. So we've got some more information from Peter's Mountain closure that happened in southern Virginia due to the ice storms we had that came through and damaged and collapsed some of those towers up there. So someone up there must have been watching my videos because we said last week that there was no signs posted and that feral hikes had made it through there. Well, now they do have signs posted, a lot of signs with everybody and their mothers logo that's on there from the National Park Service to the ACT to the uh, OCVT, which stands for the Outdoor Club of Virginia Tech. So apparently that's there, the trail maintainers in that area. So they have posted a lot of signs, huge signs on the trail saying clothes. They put up tape. So, you know, last week we said, hey, go ahead and go through there unless you see signs up from you know the national park service or national forest service something like that well now those signs have been posted and so 
kind of changed our opinion about that. There is still a means to get through there safely that the construction company has put up, and they've put up pretty much a, a chute that'll find you through safety side. You're not supposed to get to that point. My opinion is you should not be doing that. It is an official trail closure. It's also my understanding looking at gut hooks that they do have some a ranger from the National Forest Service that may be posted in the area. Let's be good hiker community citizens. Don't go through there. And particularly if there's somebody from the National Forest or a ranger or something there, they're just out there doing their job, a thankless task all, oftentimes. And uh, let's just uh, adhere to what they got to say. And I think we'll all be better for that. And then uh, Smokey Dave, he is our official Fontana correspondent. He sent a video in. So Smokey Dave, what do you got to tell us? Hey, Ramdino, this is Smoky Mountain Dave from the Fontana Marina. Anyhow, I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update. Today's Tuesday, March 23rd. Uh, we're right in the bubble. We got a ton of hikers coming through here, and we're really excited to, uh, to have them stop here at Fontana before they launch off into the Smokies. Just want to cover three quick things with you because we're getting a lot of questions. First thing is resupply options at the uh, Fontana Marina and Resort. If you're staying at the resort, there's a place called the Pit Stop, which is kind of a um, convenience store. Uh, you can get all your resupplies there. That's uh, open from eight to six every night. If you're not staying at the resort, you're staying at the Fontana Hilton. Uh, the AT goes right through the parking lot of the marina, and we've got a really good resupply this year at the marina. Also, we've got uh, patio people can sit on, relax right here on the lake, and uh, spend a little time to recharge themselves and their electronics. We've got a charging station. Got some cold beer here and a great spot to hang out a little bit before they launch into the Smokies. Second thing I want to talk about is um, people are apprehensive about the Smokies, about bears and just the Smokies in general. Uh, don't be apprehensive about it. They do great bear management. If there's uh, a renegade bear, the park management uh, relocate it very quickly. As long as you follow precautions in terms of food handling and preparation, you're going to be fine in the Smokies. Uh, it's not going to be any different elevation wise than what you did getting here. Um, so embrace it. It's a great spot and stop at Chuck Stack Fire Tower if you can. Last thing, and I don't know, Ramdino, if you've noticed this, but this hiker crowd this year is the most enthusiastic, fun-loving, adventuresome crowd we've seen come through here. Everybody's in a great mood. Of course, they've got scrapes and scratches and aches and pains, and they're taking their vitamin I for that. But generally speaking, they are just very, very excited to be out here on the trail this year. I don't know if it's the post-COVID thing, but uh, these people are just really uh, embracing the adventure of, of hiking the AT, and we just are really glad to see that. So that's about it from the Fontana Marina. Anybody has any questions, they can call us at 828-498-2017, and we'll help them with any information they need as they launch from Fontana into the Smokies. All right, we'll talk to you later. Appreciate the video, Smokey Dave. I'll be doing some trail updates later in the week about the trail days at Damascus. So I've got some new information about that. Looking forward to sharing that with you. Some things you really want to know, so stay tuned for that. Some far surface roads that are closed during the winter that are opening up, scheduled to be open April 1st. So we got Upper Nanahala, which is far surface road 67, Deep Gap, which is far surface road 71, and Way of Ball, which is far surface road 69. I thought I saw something from some hikers that Way of Ball was already open, but I cannot confirm that looking at the far surface uh, webpage there. So uh, right now, though, they are definitely scheduled to be op open April 1st. And then I've also got notice that they are about 100 blowdowns in Virginia from Trent's Grocery to Angel's Rest. So that around that area where there was all that damage from the on the power line towers. So it's really difficult to get through there. Uh, so just do your best to get through there. It's going to be hard. Try to stay on trail as much as you can because the more you walk around, the more you damage the trail. And, and that was one more thing about the power line up there. That section of the AT through that the area where the power line at Peters Mountain is damaged is uh, the, the corridor there is very narrow. So you can't walk around it through the woods bushwhacking because it's on private property. So those folks have allowed the AT to come through there and we want to maintain that good relationship we have with those folks. So if you get on their property, they are probably not going to like that. So just another reason not to try to go through there to just shuttle around. 
And last week I spoke about baggage and stuff that folks take to the trail and did a little tribute uh, the, to one of the through hikers that is out there. And I want to do the same thing to another one this week. And this is a tribute to Aquaman and his son, Christian. Christian died 16 years ago to the date that Aquaman started his trip. And he was a very uh, young young son of Aquaman's and he died from childhood leukemia and Aquaman is carrying his ashes with him throughout his hike in a little small urn that he has right here clipped to his backpack. So a little background on Aquaman. Uh, he's an Eagle Scout, grew up in Kentucky and hiking and camping a lot. He's been uh, spent a lot of time down in Florida. And of course, he got his name Aquaman because he spends a lot of time in the water. He's a dive master and he's just as comfortable in the water as under the water. And one of the reasons he did the AT is because he wanted to challenge himself. You can imagine there's not a lot of summits, a lot, not, a, a lot, not a lot of hills down in Florida. And so he felt like where else would it be odd would be a challenge for a person that goes by Aquaman that, that plays that role to go and challenge himself. So, of course, the Appalachian Trail. But he says no matter how tough the train the terrain is, he's enjoyed the challenges knowing that my little guy is right there with him. So he has taken the presence and the spirit and indeed his son along with him. And he's doing that because they were adventuring buddies. Uh, and if Christian was here with him today, he would be going with him on this adventure. He went with him in all his adventures. He said that he was his clone in any adventure that he came up with. He was always on board. And he's going to be taking his ashes all the way to Katahdin with him. And then he's going to bring them home and add them back to his urn and put a little AT sticker on his urn because he had accompanied him throughout the whole trip. And he considers that, and indeed it is an accomplishment for Christian as well. You can imagine that Christian is there spurring him on as he goes. So I know he's a, a presence there as you're going throughout your journey. Um, uh, Aquaman has a video that he did out. I'll leave a link to that. In time is your children, whether they're healthy or not. Spend time with them now. Sacrifice your time to spend the time with them because this is the time when they're young, when you build the bonds with them. And those will go on with you the rest of your life. Even if they don't go on with you the rest of your life, that bond will go on with you. And I just, um, I, I can't, you know, I sacrificed when my children were growing up and sacrificed a better job, sacrificed uh, uh, a dream job that I wanted, uh, sacrificed time rather than being in the woods with my kids, uh, chasing them around the soccer fields. And I wouldn't trade it for a moment because we have a great bond right now. So uh, my prayer and my hope for Aquaman is that he finds solace while he's on the trail and knowing he did all he could for Christian, knowing that he built that bond with him and that he feels his spirit and his presence as he continues his adventure with his son. And indeed, my prayer and my desire for all of y'all is to do likewise with your children. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here.